Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp where we speak about genomics from the beginner's perspective. This is the third part of the mini-series which is called Simplify, Organize and Automate. And this is the part about automation and about a tight connection which can be achieved between R and Plink, which can be then used to spare a lot of time when it comes to running subsequent analysis. There is a lot of room for experimenting here. So the exact setup of the scripts is very much dependent on the things what you need to be doing, but still you will see the overall framework and you will get the idea how to automate many of your scripts or Plink runs when it comes to running a bunch of Splink lines at the same time. So just go ahead and see how it is done. So in this last video, I want to show you how to integrate R variables in the Plink options line. In this example, what we want to do is extract yet another chromosome. For example, chromosome 15 that is designated with the CHR number R variable. Now, what we want to do is use the str underscore c option that is from the tidyverse that joins multiple strings together. Now, if you think about it, the options of Plink is basically just one line of text. So what we want to do is just replace some variables in there so we can use basically the same text, but with the change numbers. So basically you write the, the stable text that you want to appear uh, between quotation marks and you put in the R variable between the commas. And so basically this strc puts it everything together and produces a single line of text that is then used as an input for Plink. One important thing to note here, so there is a separator, it is basically nothing. So any space you want to keep or we want any space that you want to appear in the Plink line must be in the quotation mark. So that's why I end with space here and start with space here after the R variable. As, as for our test, we start with an empty directory. So there is nothing here and the data is being located in the data directory. So we run this and we see that in this chrom indeed chromosome 15 is being extracted. So it's a chromosome 15 here and also the same variable was used in the output file name. So on the hard disk, we see that chromosome 15 was indeed extracted. And now all you need to do if you want some other chromosome uh, to be extracted, that you don't need to rewrite the whole thing and copy paste the whole line, but basically you just change here. You need to rerun this line so, so that to change the values within R to a different number and you rerun the exact same line and you see that there is a different chromosome now is being extracted with a different name as it, as it was specified in our command. So, and for the grand finale of this mini series, let me introduce you to a small script that actually extracts all the 29 autosomes in this simple form. And actually it uses all the new knowledge that we learned during this series. So it uses the run Plink function. So we actually don't need to have Plink in the directory. It creates folders with the dir create R function and it actually stores the data. It puts the output data to the output directory and takes the input data from the input data directory. So it basically does everything what we want. So there is a minor issue here. It's chromosome set 29, but actually then it is ready to go. So just to walk you through it. So basically we define in a first step, the name of the output folders that it is called now output chromosome one, output chromosome two and three and so on. And then we use a loop where we, the I is uh, basically a counter that is has the value of one in the first loop, value of two in the second loop and so on, and goes to 29 loops in this case. And each time it creates the appropriate directory, taking the value from the output folders vector, and then it runs Plink 
for the appropriate chromosome with, and puts out the appropriate output file name into the appropriate folder. So if we run this, you will see that it will be running one blink run after the other. So, and it comes out and ends with a 29. So you see that here are the 29 folders for the 29 autosomes that were extracted and each of them has the appropriate file name as well. Of course, the extraction of the chromosomes was just an example and you could get actually very creative when it comes to other applications, how to join the possibilities given by Plink and R. Thank you very much for watching this mini series about the connection of R and Plink. If you are not a subscriber yet for the channel and you find this videos useful, I just encourage you to su subscribe so you can be notified about the future videos that come out every week. Also, if you find this video useful I, you, and you think that somebody else could benefit from it as well, I just encourage you to share it with your friends and colleagues so well, they just can learn about the channel and also learn about the awesome things that we are doing here. Thank you very much uh, for your time. You have invested in these videos overall, and I wish you a very nice continuation of the day.